क्लासिकल नॉर्मल लीनियर रिग्रेशन मॉडल सी द क्लासिकल थ्योरी ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिकल रेफरेंस in simple terms statistical inference in simplest term what we call the statistics has two main branches to it the first branch is called estimation and the second branch is called hypothesis testing estimation is what we have covered right estimation is beta 1 beta 2 sigma square these are my parameters and i want to estimate them and i come up with their estimators which is known as beta 1 hat beta 2 hat sigma square hat these are my estimators that's the first part that is exactly what we did and we noted few of the important properties we noted that they had several statistical properties like unbiasedness minimum variance consistent etc in particularly we talked about the blue properties but we also said that these estimators since their value will change from sample to sample as you change the values in the sample the values of betas will also change isn't it so they are random variables right they are random in nature but estimation is only half the thing the second half of statistical inference is called hypothesis testing and what we do in hypothesis testing is to understand that okay i have been able to determine this estimator for this parameter but how close is this estimator to the actual value of the parameter in simple terms the question that we are asking is does this beta 1 hat represent is it a true representation of the population can i go ahead and can i draw inference about the population using my estimator this is the 
second question that we are now asking. So to do that, because I just now proved that betas that you have estimated, they are a random variable. What we have in mind is called probability distribution. So we want to understand the probability distribution of disturbances which are your UI. Now, let us just go back to the proof that we had done. And remember that specifically we had proved that beta 2 hat can be written as submission ki yi, where ki is xi upon submission xi square. And if you don't recall this, then just remember that beta 2 hat was submission xi yi upon submission xi square. yi is nothing but submission xi yi minus y bar upon submission xi square. This is nothing but submission xi capital yi minus submission xi y bar upon submission xi square. This is nothing but submission xi yi minus y bar submission xi upon submission xi square. Now, this is nothing but submission xi yi upon submission xi square minus y bar submission xi upon submission xi square. And we know that this small xi, this is nothing but this is x minus x bar whole, you know, submission summed up. And we know that deviation from means summed up is always zero for any variable. So sum of deviation from mean is zero. So I get this as submission xi capital yi upon submission xi square. This is what we will get. Right. So based on that is this derivation of beta 2 hat. So beta 2 hat would be submission ki into yi. Right? Now, once we understand this derivation, we can also go ahead and we can say that since we know that yi is beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui. We can say that beta 2 hat, which I just wrote as submission ki yi, can be written as submission beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui into ki. Ki is as is. I'm not changing ki here. Ki is kept as is. It's just that I am opening up yi. Right? Now, if you notice, ki was simply xi upon submission xi square. Beta 1, beta 2 is a constant. 
excise are all stochastic. They are non-random. They are all fixed. So ultimately, if I have a look at it, my Ki, which is only consisting of Xi's, which are all non-random fixed elements. So this part is fixed. Similarly, beta 1, this is constant. Beta 2, this is constant. Xi, this is non-stochastic. So fixed. 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 What am I left up with? I am left up with Ui. This is random. So beta 2 hat this is a function of everything being fixed except ui which is random so we can say that beta 2 hat is ultimately a linear function of random variable ui which is random by assumption we have assumed that UI is random in nature. So since beta 2 hat only gets its randomness because of UI, therefore, can I go ahead and can I say that the probability distribution of beta 2 hat depends only on the probability distribution of ui see probability distribution only exists for variables which are random for anything which is a random variable. Only for that you can have a distribution. If something is fixed, you can't have a probability distribution. Right? So we can say that the, I proved this for beta 2, but because beta 1 hat is nothing but y bar minus beta 2 hat x bar, beta 1 hat will also depend on beta 2 hat's probability distribution which depends on UI's probability distribution. So what we can therefore say that the probability distribution of OLS estimators will depend on the error term. It will depend on UIs. And now, I'll tell you why it is important, but now if I assume that these error terms are normally distributed, If I tell you that the error terms follow a normal distribution, can we go ahead and can we say that betas also follow a normal distribution? We can, right? So once we bring in this assumption into being, 
once we say that the betas are normally distributed because the error is normally distributed what we gain that is known as the classical normal linear regression model in simple terms c n l r m so we get this classical normal linear regression model because of the assumption that uis are normally distributed which makes my betas normally distributed so it becomes a cnlrm model 